Imagine that you're on your computer and maybe you're playing your favorite game. Your friend calls you and tells you to download the updated game. Maybe they released some new features and he wants you to try it out. You say, sure, why not? The only problem is that the new game requires an updated GPU driver. That means that you have to go and find the new drivers and then install them. That's not it. You then have to download the updated CPU drivers to be compatible with the new GPU drivers. Then you have to update the game to the new version. And that's still not it, because then you also have to update your computer to the newest and greatest version. After all of that, you then try out the new game, and it turns out that you actually don't like this new interface at all. Now, what can you do? You're pretty much stuck at this point, right? Well, you decide that, you know what, I have a plan. Why don't I just uninstall the new game and then go back and download the old game again? That should work. The only problem is that you have a new GPU driver and the new GPU driver is now not compatible with the old game anymore. That's not it. The new CPU also doesn't support the old game and the updated computer also now doesn't support the old game. Well, at this point, you're pretty much stuck. But wait a minute, because let's go back to this original scenario where you were playing this game and you enjoyed this game. Your friend told you, hey, download this newest game. Instead of going and updating all of the drivers, updating the GPU, all of those things, all you did was you downloaded the Docker container for the new game. The Docker container had the newest GPU drivers. It had the newest CPU um, drivers. It had the updated game, all of those things inside that container. And because it had all of those things, it was very easy for you to go and play the new game. And then you see that, oh, this game, I don't like it anymore. All you would do is just simply delete the Docker container. You don't have to change any of your drivers on your computer. You don't have to touch any of the settings on your computer. It makes your life so much easier. And then you can go back to playing your original game, just like how you did before. Now, the same kind of thing applies to coding as well. So imagine that you were writing some code and your code requires a set of different things like Python 3.8, it has NumPy, it has Pandas, Matplotlib, all of these are different libraries in which you work to code. Now, your friend calls you and tells you, hey, can you send me your code? You say, sure, why not? All you do is just simply take all the code that you've been writing, you send that over to your friend. Your friend calls you back and then they tell you that your code does not work. It's pretty much trash it, because it's not working on my computer. You try to figure out, well, why is that code not working on their computer? And it turns out that they have a really old version of Python 1.7, whereas you are working with Python 3. They have an old version of CUDA, an old version of Matplotlib. All of these different libraries were really, really old on their computer. So then what solution could your friend have? Well, they could just update all of the libraries and all of the drivers, or they could just call you back and tell you, hey, can you send me your Docker container? And what that means is that you'll take all of these different packages and versions like Python and NumPy and all of those things, put that into a Docker container, and then all you would do is just, instead of sending your code, you will send your Docker container that has all the packages, all the drivers, all of those things, and send it over to your friend. It's basically like taking your entire state of your computer, shipping it or packing it up into a container, and then shipping it over to your friend. And then all your friend does is extract the Docker container on their computer, and then your code is going to work fine. And that is the fundamental idea behind a Docker container. So let's just say that you want to install TensorFlow and TensorFlow is this platform for doing machine learning. Well, one way in which you can install TensorFlow is by downloading all of the different packages. Well, to do that, what you'll do is scroll down, look at all of the different requirements. First, you're gonna need the right NVIDIA GPU drivers. Then from here, you also need to download CUDA Toolkit. Now, what could that toolkit? Well, it depends on what uh, NVIDIA drivers you have. Then you also need the COD and then SDK. That's a whole other headache and nightmare that you'll have to download. Well, it, you can see that it gets really old really quickly. Now, what's the alternative way? Well, what if I could just download this using a Docker container? What does that installation look like? Well, it says run a TensorFlow container. So if I click here, basically all I have is just four words, Docker pull, TensorFlow, TensorFlow. So what does that installation look like? Well, 
all I would do is just copy the one that I want, open up my command prompt window, and then paste it. Once I do that, there we go. It's already started pulling in the Docker container. And basically, it's going to download all the drivers, download all the things that I need. And all I will do is just run the Docker container, and it's going to have everything that I need. It's going to make my life so much more simple. Now, just like how we have a Docker container for TensorFlow, we have Docker containers for so many different programs. All you would do is just go to Docker Hub, which is hub.docker.com. And here we can see that there is a Docker container for TensorFlow. There's a Docker container for PyTorch. There is a Docker container for Nginx, for MySQL, for PostgreSQL, for Gradle, for K8, for so many different things. For each one of these Docker containers, suppose that if you wanted to, what you could do is search for Open Web UI, right? That's one Docker container that you want to download. Well, all you will do is click on one that other people have downloaded in the past. Now, say that you don't want the latest version of Open Web UI. You want to revert to a different version of Open Web UI. Well, all you will do is click on tags and then simply just find the tag that you want to revert to. So for example, this is the Docker container from 12, 13, December the 13th. And then if you wanted to go back to maybe a March 2022 or March 2024 version of um, Open Web UI, all you will do is just simply pull this Docker container. So as you can see, Docker makes your life so much more simple. Now, how do you actually install a Docker container? Well, to do that, you'll first have to download Docker Desktop. So go to your favorite browser and then just type in Docker Desktop. Then click on Docker Desktop and then simply select Download where it's going to be over here. Now, if you have a Mac, you'll download the one for Mac. If you have a Windows, you'll just download the one for Windows. Now, once that's done, you'll simply install Docker on your computer. And it will look something like this. Yours might be empty because you might not have any running containers. But right now, I have a few containers that I'm currently running. One is the Kokoro um, Fast API, which is the text-to-speech model container. I have another Docker container that's running Open Web UI. Another Docker container for PyTorch. Suppose I want to train a machine learning model or a large language model. All I'm going to do is just run this Docker container and then execute it, run all my code inside of this Docker container. And um, here is one for TensorFlow. So this is the fundamental idea behind Docker. I just wanted to give you a high level overview of what Docker is and what you can use Docker for, why Docker makes your life so much more simple. In a next video, I'm going to cover extensively all the different Docker commands that um, you can start running. If you wanted to build your Docker container from scratch, how you could do that. And also if you want to share your container with other people around the world, how you can set that up as well. For now, all you need to know was what a Docker container is, why it's useful, and how you can download your own Docker container. So hopefully you found this video insightful. If you want me to cover similar videos in the future, then please leave a comment in the comment section below. I really appreciate you for your time. Thank you, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.